<sighs> Why did I do this to myself? <laughs> Hey guys, we are back with yet again another one and we are back at the end of the month when I do what I always do, which is look at the books that I have left on my TBR and go, what did you even do this month? Did you even read? Do you even know how to read? Is that a thing that you do ever? And even when I feel like I've had good months, right, I'm still like down to the gun at the end of the month, like I've got to get some of these books knocked off my list. And there are some months where it's kind of like there's nothing I could have done about it, right? Like, I really couldn't. I had too busy of a month. I had too many activities. I had too much work. I had too many parent responsibilities, husband responsibilities, etc. Like, I did my best. This particular month was not one of those months. I could have done better. This month, between momming, wifing, working, baseball momming. My son is on a very competitive travel league that plays out of state and has a lot of really, you know, very time taxing, time demanding practices and events. Um, and then my father having surgery and being worried about him and stressed about him and taking care of him. Um, I found myself wasting a lot of time doom scrolling on my phone, almost like paralyzed from reading, meaning I would prioritize and do anything over reading. Um, and it just kind of slowed my progress down a little bit. When I am very mentally taxed or very stressed, it's hard for me to sit down and become immersed in the story that I'm reading because my brain is going a million miles per hour in 40 different directions. And that was the month I had this past month where I just felt like I couldn't sit down and get absorbed in a story. I just had too much going on like in the old noggin. So I get to the end of the month. I do have a week left to the month that I'm like, I know I could do better than this. So for a minute, I thought, what if I did my swapping screen time for reading challenge again? But full disclosure with you guys right now, I don't even want to look at my screen time because it's going to be so disgustingly high. And that I'm just setting myself up for failure. I'm not going to complete that challenge. I'm just not I can't read eight hours a day or whatever it's going to say it is. So I want this to be something that really knocks a bunch of books off and really gets me back on the right track for April, which is usually one of my best reading months of the year. Also my birthday month. And we have some fun stuff planned for that. So so I didn't want to do that. And then I was like, what if I did another reading for 24 hours challenge? But as we've discussed before, I can't do 24 hours nonstop because I do have two boys that I am responsible for and do rely on me for all things life. So that's not something that I can do. So I kind of looked at my stack and I decided, what if I went on to Goodreads and I read my highest and my lowest rated book left on my TBR to knock at least those two off this month. I think that could work. And I don't think that's like overly stressing me, putting an undue amount of expectations on me. Like I could do two books in the next few days. I know I can do it. It'll get me back motivated. So let's talk about what book is the highest rated and what book is the lowest rated according to Goodreads that I will be finishing up the month of, month of March with. Okay. I have my handy dandy notes here and I also took screenshots so you could see that at the time that I am filming this, not necessarily right now, these numbers might have changed, Goodreads changes so quickly, but at the time of filming this accurately depicts the ratings and the amount of reviews and ratings on Goodreads. So let's start from the top and work our way down. Up here on the top we have Kiss the Sky by Becca Ritchie and this is rated a 4.25 with 71,897 ratings at the time of this recording. Next we have Heartless, which is rated a 4.39 with 187, 630, 630 views. So let's talk about what each of these books is rated at the current time on Goodreads and how many reviews it currently has. So first we have Kiss the Sky by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This is rated a 4.25 stars with 71,897 ratings. 
Next we have Heartless by Elsie Silver, and this is rated a 4.39 stars with 187,630 ratings. Next we have Barbarian Alien by Ruby Dixon. This is rated 3.77 stars with 75,429 ratings. Then we have A Court This Cruel and Lovely by Stasia Stark. This is rated 4.16 stars with 28,551 ratings. Next we have Destroy Me, the little novella in the Shatter Me series by Tahara Mafi, and this is rated a 4.01 with 250,726 ratings. Wow, that's a lot. Next we have The Infamous, Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Moss. This is rated 4.25 stars with 554,821 ratings. Then we have The Lies We Steal by Monty J. This is rated 3.66 stars with 6,623 ratings. Next we have In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune, and this is rated 3.95 stars with 56,807 ratings. Then we have Stephen King's Billy Summers. This is rated 4.21 with 153,185 ratings. Then we have She Started It by Cian Gilbert. This is rated 3.58 stars with 38,929 ratings. And last but not least, we have Remarkably Great Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt, which is rated a whopping 4.41 stars with 519,000 284 reviews. Wow, that is crazy. So there you have it, guys. According to Goodreads, we are going to be reading the highest rated book, which is Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt, and the lowest rated book, which is She Started It by Cyan Gilbert. This week, I am intrigued and interested and scared. <laughs> So I did not think that this was going to be the way that this turned out. I'm going to be honest. If I had to have placed a guess, I probably would have thought that we would have been reading. I probably would have thought the Assassin's Blade would have been the highest. And for the lowest, I think I probably would have said either The Lies We Steal because it's very indie and not very well known or Barbarian Alien because, listen, Alien Smut is not for everybody. Or I guess maybe Destroy Me because people don't typically rate tiny little novellas very highly. Like even in when I was reading Akatar, I think I gave A Court of Frost and... A Court of Frost and Starlight. Jeez Louise. I think I only gave that like a 3.5 or something for the Akatar series. It was admittedly my lowest one. And it had nothing to do with how much I enjoyed or didn't enjoy it. It just kind of had to do with like, did it further the functionality of the story? Was it as, could I put it on the same pedestal as Akamath or Akawar or the rest of the series? So I just didn't think it stood up like the rest of them did. And that's typical with novellas. So the fact that Remarkably Bright Creatures and She Started It were what we're going to read is a little surprising, but I'm excited. So now the question becomes, do we start low or do we start high? Let me think about this for a minute. Okay, I've been sitting here staring at these two. And I could see benefits for starting each first. So like, I could see the benefit of starting low because I'm like a give me the bad news first kind of girl, right? I want the good news last. But I'm just sitting here being like, I am so not in the mood for a mystery thriller right now. And would this potentially be so bad it puts me in a slump, maybe? But then I guess Remarkably Bright Creatures could pull me out of it. Or do I start high, which this is one of my books that I've been anticipating reading. I actually really want to read this. But then it, it's like, is it fair to then read this after and try to compare the two? What would you do? Comment below what you would do and see if it's the same thing I end up doing. Okay, I think I'm going to start with Remarkably Great Creatures just because I don't want to have this on another TBR. I really, really want to read this book. Like, I could put this back on my shelves and have this be put on another TBR and not really be that upset, but I do really want to knock this off of my TBR. I'm really excited. I've heard a lot of people, obviously, on Goodreads, love it, and I want to see what all the hype is about. So 
We're going to start Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt and see what our highest rated book has to offer. It is the next day and I officially read 51% according to Goodreads of Remarkably Bright Creatures yesterday. I am on page 187. It looks like more than 51% to me, but we'll take Goodreads words for it. I'm going to save my thoughts until the very end on both of the books that I'm reading, but I did sit and read, you know, 187 pages, and I'm reading two books right now, so I kind of switched between the two of them yesterday. Um, but today I have to take my car back to the service center. I've only had it back for, I think, less than two weeks now. It's still just not right, and now a headlight is out. So... I have to take it back to the service center today and I have a weird feeling they're going to tell me that this isn't something that qualifies for a loaner so I'm probably going to have to sit there and like wait for them to actually work on my car figure out what the heck happened and what's going on so my car is only two and a half years old like my headlight is an LED adaptive headlight like it should not go out that quick so this is not a car haul or a car update but it's just flipping around in the old noggin today. So I am going to bring Remarkably Bright Creatures and I'm actually going to bring Aragon as well because it's the last week of my book club is finishing it and I only have like 75 pages left to it. So I'm going to bring my two books and hopefully I finish both of them today. We shall see. Beneath the starlight sky our love secret line. It is officially the next day and I did finish Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. I read this in 24 hours and then thought about starting our next book last night but laid down on the couch with my husband and conked out, out for the count. So I did finish Remarkably Bright Creatures. I'm going to save all my thoughts for the end of this video for after we finish our next book but for right now I am going to sit down and start She Started It by C.N. Gilbert. This was our low pick according to Goodreads, so hopefully I disagree. Hopefully this is my favorite book of the year. You never know. Am I just sunshine and pink clouds in the sky? Everything is right Imagine stars lighting up the night And a shooting star so vibrant You have to make a wish Nothing's ever in your way Scoring every shot you make No, you've never heard of pain Because you're just high on life Every day is Saturday Life is sweet as birthday cake Why can't it just stay this way? left on the timer which is great um, and let's talk about where I got to with my reading yesterday so I made it to page 186 of she started it so the top part is what I read and the bottom part is what I have left um, I'm gonna reserve my thoughts until the end but I definitely can finish this today so that's gonna be kind of like on the ticket finishing this and then I'm also about 100 pages away from the end of our Homey and Homely book club read for the month, which is Aragon. So I have that little sliver left of Aragon. So I'm going to finish this today. And then I have another video I need to film, Banana Bread to Eat, Coffee to Drink. So we have a busy pack day today, but let's go ahead and get started. I think, how many pages are even in this book? <clears throat> So I'm on 186 and there are three forty. So what is that? 
140, well, 160-ish pages left, something like that. So I could definitely do that. I'm going to go sit down and bang out 160 pages of this and come back to you with my final thoughts on our highest and lowest read I'm from Goodreads. Cynical, oh so cynical, never thought somebody could save me from another fall, from another scar, but I'm all healed up, standing steady. I couldn't see colors, it was all in gray Till you showed me every shade Now I feel like summer on a rainy day Like there's no Okay, so I'm officially on page 308 of like 342. So I have like 30 something pages left. And I'm hoping that this next 30 pages really like shocks and awes and interests me because what is kind of typical for me with mystery thrillers is that I just lose interest as the story goes on. I find it predictable. I find it unbelievable. I never, I have never once read a mystery thriller where I've deeply connected to the characters. I always find them just like maybe purposely Un purposefully unlikable and because I'm not connected with the characters I just don't care and that's something that I've talked about a lot with my relationship with the genre in general that I'm just not like a super dedicated mystery thriller girl it's not my favorite because of these exact reasons I think I'm a character based dialogue based like plot reader and I these things just don't connect for me in mystery thrillers and I'm kind of struggling that with that right now in this one and it's fairly typical of the genre with me um but the last you know the last part of the thriller is where the meat and potatoes of it are right like I think for the most part the big reveal has happened which I found totally predictable but maybe in the next 30 pages it's gonna shock and awe me so we'll see um yeah, it's just kind of, for right now, I'm just not interested, so. Let's continue and finish this book and see if that changes. I don't care where we go, I don't care what we do, just as long as I'm right there beside you. I won't ever let go, I won't ever be cruel. Like the world was to me before I found you So if I ever lose my mind I'll be fine cause you're my silver lining And if my world comes crashing down I'll be fine cause you're my silver lining Okay, I am live off of finishing She Started It by Cian, Cyan, Cheyenne Gilbert. I don't know how you pronounce this, but I'm live off of finishing this. I literally just finished this like five minutes ago. Um, I'm going to give you my thoughts on this one first, just because it's fresh in my mind. And I know I say this every single time I read a mystery thriller, but I just want you guys to keep in mind that like this is not my favorite genre. Like, in general so sometimes like th mystery thrillers if you're a huge mystery thriller le reader and this did it for you like I probably just don't get it it's probably a me problem not a book problem um but Goodreads did have this as our low for the TBR month at 3.58 stars and my personal rating is a three star. So I'm going a little bit under the Goodreads rating. Um, if you haven't heard anything about this book, this book is about these four girls who knew this girl in high school, this fifth girl, this other girl named Poppy in high school, and weren't the nicest to her in high school. And since then, it's been 10 years, they've lost touch, they've all moved on, they're adults, they're married, they have careers, you know, they've moved on. 
and they randomly get these notes in the mail from Poppy, not only inviting them to her wedding, but inviting them to her bachelorette party on this private luxury island in the Bahamas. And in the envelopes are first class plane tickets to this island for her bachelorette party. And they think it's odd because it's like, well, we haven't even talked to Poppy in like over 10 years. And they weren't necessarily friends. I mean, they were, I think Poppy was trying to get in with their group, um, but they weren't necessarily friends. But regardless, this like luxury trip kind of tempts them and they decide to go anyways. And what ensues from there when they find out that the trip isn't all that it seemed up front. It was okay. It really was okay. And I'm gonna be honest with you, for the first like half of the book, like I was super sucked, sucked into the writing. I find the premise semi unbelievable. You know, like, are you really just gonna get out of plane and hike off to an island with a girl you haven't seen or talked to in 10 years? Like, the premise is a bit flawed, in my opinion. But whatever, if we're suspending a little bit of belief, because it's a book and it's fiction, I know, I know, I get it. Um, even if you kind of buy into that, this fell into what typically happens with mystery thrillers for me where it ends up like just going too far and just becoming so unbelievable and kind of like your typical like horror movie like the characters just end up making such stupid decisions and I just I lose interest it is like eye rolling and it just gets to be a little bit like are they are they being serious like I, I just I have trouble with mystery thrillers guys I don't know what it is the only one that has come really really close to being like a solid work for me was The Last Word by Taylor Adams I really liked that one I think I gave that like over a four I think it was like a 4.25 4.5 stars this not so much and I think what put the nail in the coffin for this one for me at the end was how incredibly predictable it was I called every single plot twist I wouldn't even call it a twist because it was like glaringly obvious right like glaringly obvious they almost straight up tell you like they almost let you know what's gonna happen and then they like reveal this information that they straight up told you would happen and they're like oh could you have guessed surprise and you're like yes you told me this 10 chapters ago like it wasn't shocking so it was super predictable there was not one single thing that shocked me in this book not one single thing I guessed every single character flaw I guessed every single plot twist I there was no need to reveal because I knew what happened and then like the last plot twist at the end I called it I knew it it wasn't shocking so three stars um it was it was fine I mean it was perfectly it was you know average fine um writing was decent dialogue heavy it was good the characters were horribly unlikable but they typically are in mystery thrillers um, you weren't meant to like them. That was the point. So three stars. I would tend to agree with Goodreads. Not my strongest mystery thriller ever. However, we then have to talk about Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. Wow. Okay. So this book was rated a 4.41 and was our highest rated on Goodreads for this month on our TBR. And I gave this a 4.5. So I went a little bit under on She Started It and I went a little bit over the Goodreads rating on this one. This was such an incredible, incredible book. This is definitely more on like the lit fic, lit fic like literary fiction um, side of what I typically read. But it was so incredibly well done to the point where like I don't even know where to start. So let's just start with telling you what this book is about. So this book follows a couple of characters. Our main female character, in my opinion, would be Tova Sullivan. She's an older woman who is a widower. She lost her husband um, to cancer and then she lost her son, her only son, in a pretty tragic accident. And just to avoid being in a depressive hole and being alone all the time in her home, she takes this job as a cleaner at an aquarium in her home state of Washington. I think they're like outside of Seattle somewhere. I think it's like Sowell Bay, Washington. Um, she takes a job cleaning at the aquarium and strikes up a cute little friendship with the Great Pacific Octopus named Marcellus at the aquarium. And as it follows a couple other of characters in the story and how they kind of interconnect to each other and how they interconnect and how Marcellus perceives them in their stories and this incredibly perceptive, incredibly intelligent octopus, this remarkably bright creature, Marcellus, 
how they all change each other's lives and come to be important in their lives and how they heal from grief and how they overcome tragedy and hardship and it's just so so beautifully done it's beautifully done i love tova i love her you just you feel like this maternal this like almost grand parental love for her as the story goes on and you just connect with her character so much and then marcellus the octopus like I love him. I love him and I love it. And what's really cool about this book is you get his point of view throughout the story. So there's actual chapters written from Marcellus's point of view and you get to hear how he's interpreting his world. He's a little mischievous, smart octopus and I adore him. And this book is fantastic. Please, please, even if you're like me and don't read a ton of lit fic, please go pick up this book because it is so good. It is so good. This at this point in time will probably go as one of my best books of the year this year. So there you have it. I read our highest and our lowest books according to Goodreads and according to all of you fabulous reviewers on Goodreads for this March TBR. And I got through two books in two days, which is really fantastic. I think it was technically like two and a half days, but who's counting? I got through two books in two days and knocked them off our TBR. So that definitely like I loved this challenge. It just really jump started my reading for the month. And it's like the end of the month, but I mean like my reading for the week to finish up my TBR. And I already know which book I'm going to jump into next. So maybe I'll do a quick little short or something on Instagram or YouTube and see how many books I could finish in the next couple of days before the month is over. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you stuck around this entire time, please leave the cute little octopus emoji for my new favorite character, Marcellus. And then go ahead and do all the YouTube things like comment and subscribe. If you've read either, either of these books, I would love to hear if you agree or disagree with the Goodreads ratings. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>